guests and gentlemen. Very good evening from Bangladesh. Today, we are hosting Women Entrepreneurship Congress 2020 for the first time in Bangladesh. And we are hosting this program in association with Dafod International University, Global Entrepreneurship Week Bangladesh, and Female Innovators Hub. As you know that Global Entrepreneurship Week is happening around the world. People are use, uh, people are having this global entrepreneur this global entrepreneurship week in this uh, month, and thousands and thousands of people are celebrating this month. And to celebrate this GEW 2020, we are actually organizing this program. Now, uh, as we have already finished so many programs uh, today. Now we are actually having an important issue. For example, we have talked about women entrepreneurship, women leadership, how to unleash the potential of the women entrepreneurs. In this session, we are going to talk about how to build the competence and the courage required for being a women leader. Because you know that courage is a very important thing. To discuss about this issue, we have very good panel discussion sessions and good panelists with us. First of all, I would like to invite you all and welcome you all to our session. I would like to talk about our panelists at the very beginning. First, we have with our Christina van der who is the vice president of Policy and Research Global Entrepreneurship Network. Hello, Cecilia. Okay. We have Cecilia Wissinger, who is the founder of Mass Collaboration. And we have Aumi Murray, who is the founder and of We In Tech Global. Uh, we, will, we will learn about more about the parallels from them. So I would like to start with Christina. Okay, so can you please tell a little bit about yourself to our audience so that we got to know about who you are and what what is your entrepreneurial activities that you are doing for developing entrepreneurial women in the whole world? Yes, certainly. Thank you, Beauty, and thank you to the organizers of the Women's Entrepreneurship Congress for having us this morning. As Beauty mentioned, uh, at the Global Entrepreneurship Network, one of our initiatives is this uh, Global Entrepreneurship Week, which seeks to, seeks to raise awareness about the role of entrepreneurs in our society, in our economies, and especially in the current context in the, in the recovery that's, uh, that we need to um, uh, start, or we need to start building. And the uh, a Global Entrepreneurship Network has several initiatives. I am in charge of coordinating the policy and research activities. And in that sense, I've had the uh, honor to talk to policymakers about some of the blind spots in policy making, including the ones uh, that are preventing them from effectively supporting women's entrepreneurship. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Christina. Now I'd love to know about more about Cecilia. Can you please share something? Well, thank you. Thank you again for inviting me, and uh, and I'm honored to be along among all these wonderful women who are making such great impact. Um, so I am an ecosystem building practitioner. I work with the people who are doing the work of supporting entrepreneurs across the country in the United States and around the world. Um, I'm currently a consultant with the Kauffman Foundation, and my focus is the ecosystem building practitioner community. Um, and my personal consultancy, I work um, focused on inclusive collaboration and cultural competence um, and how we can raise awareness and diversity and, um, and have people work better together. Um, I'm also a board member with the Institute of Work in the Economy and the Startup Champions Network in the United States. Thank you, Cecilia. Great to know. Now I would like to know a bit more about Aomi, what you are doing, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, 
Hi, thanks, Beauty. So first of all, thank you so much for the invitation. And I'm so happy and honored to be with such amazing women. So I didn't know before, they haven't met, never met before Cecilia and Christina, but we'll definitely follow up because I think it's amazing what you girls are doing and would love to see how we can collaborate and work together because I'm the founder and the CEO of Women in Tech. We are a non-profit organization based in France, the headquarters, but we have chapters in about 16 countries and we have members in over 100 countries around the world. And we have about close to 40,000 members today and growing. Um, and what we do is we really try and work and have impact on closing the gender gap in technology, which is very big. So not only do we want to close the gender gap, but we want to empower women in different ways, working in education, in social inclusion, in entrepreneurship, and also in science and innovation. And our mission and our goal is to be able to empower 5 million women by 2030, answering to five SDGs. So it's a very ambitious goal, but we... We, we like to dream big and we put everything, every energy and all the passion that we have and the belief that we have to get in making this come true. Thank you, Omi. So, but I now come to the point. Our main theme of our, about this session is that we are going to talk about the building connections, building competency, what is required for being a women leader. You know that? Uh, because uh, the women have latent talents, but they do not have that much courage to come for and connecting all the people around the world because my main motive for you is that connecting the not only women leaders but also male leaders. But uh, my first question is that uh, how do you actually evaluate? the inner uh, latent talent of women and how to bring those talent from the women so that they can come forward, starting with Christina. Yes, Beauty. So, uh, like you said, there's an inner uh, value that women have and can bring to different markets, different solutions that are offered to consumers that sometimes is not tapped. And uh, the reason is because women uh, have a hard, harder time still accessing uh, the right connections that allows them to connect with other people where they can collaborate. Um, we have several networks, including our own, uh, that are trying to overcome those challenges. And I think um, what we need is to have more network managers that are women that can under understand the needs and the challenges faced by uh, women entrepreneurs that can identify, like you say, the latent talent in, in some of their members. Um, so I think that's one of the reasons that we're not uh, we're not seeing the full value of women in entrepreneurship ecosystem yet is because it hasn't been uh, tapped. Uh, we have also several programs for women's entrepreneurship that we're very proud of uh, among our members in different countries. But women um, are are a very diverse group in themselves as well. So we still have to fit. Uh, we still need programs that fit all the profiles of women's entrepreneurs. We have a Yumi here uh, who specifically said women in tech. I, 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 I will let her speak about that, but I'm sure within, even with that, within that group, there's different profiles. So uh, I think the, the assuming that if you have one entrepreneur, women's entrepreneurship program, it will fit all is, is uh, preventing us from seeing the full uh, uh, talent that we have in our, in, in our society and our women entrepreneurs. And finally, I think uh, uh, also the reason that uh, you, we're struggling with, with uh, appreciating and fully connecting the talent of women in entre entrepreneurial projects is that sometimes we have created networks and then forgot to put women's networks and forgot to connect them with the broader ecosystem. Uh, uh, remember, entrepreneurship is all about connection and collaboration. So we don't we have to remember to to work with women entrepreneurs, but then also build partnerships to connect. Uh, connect them to the rest, the rest of the ecosystem. Thank you, so Christina, that, for... Yes, I if you can continue. Yeah. No, no, I was just I want to say that I will let my co-panelists uh, elaborate a little bit on some of these points and additional uh, hurdles so that we can answer your question of uh, why, why, what causing back women entrepreneurs. Yes, yes, definitely. So, Cecilia, my question... Also, my question is that uh, 
in europe you know, what actually holding back women to build their connections with others so it's a it's definitely a, a hard it's an important and hard question to answer um first I, in, in my attempt to be brief in my introduction, I forgot to mention the future agro challenge that I'm involved in, and I feel like I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the impact makers um, with future agro challenge. But just to answer your question, um, as I answer the question, I'm going to answer in generalities. Um, this is not applicable to all women. Um, there are definitely exceptions, but um, but as as a whole, um, in the the work that I'm doing, and at women are more often the connectors historically and culturally because they're the consistent members of families and communities. I think women build connections naturally, but because they're often the people who are nurturers. The connections built take on a different shape, and they're not um, advantageous to us on the onset. So historically, we brought, we're brought into the work as um, a support role. So you see that the first um, roles that women took in the workforce are assistance to something, whether they're admins or or um, or secretaries or or whatever. Their their roles have been historically that's the entry point in which they come. They don't take a primary role. And then it takes a while for that environment to shift where people take on, you know, when we talk about the first woman doctor, um, we don't talk about the, the 100 plus years of women being nurses before um, somebody got elevated to that position. And when women are ambitious, they're perceived as aggressive. When they're decisive, they become pigeonholed as being bossy. Sensitivity becomes emotional. So there's a negative context and a cultural taboo. There's also a big taboo with women, um, single or married, approaching people to connect. Then it's um, it's it's not necessarily a, a, an open construct. Yes, it's 2020. We've come a long way. But in many ways, we have a long way to go. And I believe one of the latent and unappreciated skills that women have is that they are connectors and they approach it in a very holistic view. We look at the whole. We want, um, we, we look at the, the desire for the majority to thrive instead of the individual. And that's not necessarily something that, um, that um, articulates well when we champion for ourselves. Thank you, Cecilia. If I ask the same question to the uh, army, how do you actually evaluate these things? Because uh, you, from your venture, you are connecting the women, uh, women intake. So you are bringing the ambassadors together and so on. But how do you evaluate these things? What actually holding back women? Thanks, Beauty. I kind of agree really with both Christina and Cecilia. I do think women are natural connectors, and I don't think we have a problem in connecting at all. I think it's just something that's inner from ourselves. We are good connectors. And also, I think we feel much more powerful when we are together, because uh, very often women, when they want to speak up for themselves, if they're all alone, they will not. But if they know that there are a team behind them, there are a, a, a group behind them, a network or sisterhood, um, they feel empowered. So I think the, the power of, of, of these um, women networks or networks, um, it's because we, it, it does empower women because they know they're not alone. Um, however, I do agree with Christina that you know there are lots of different small networks of women, um, women things, um, women doing, I don't know, doing sewing or doing data science or doing AI or doing tech. And I think we have also to look at the bigger picture. I think there's some point we have to think that we are much stronger when, if we are together and the impact that we can have and the lobbying we can do and with the government with, and with the whole of, you know, with the European nation or, 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 or many other things is if we talk together. So I think we have to think about creating more alliances of creating women um, collectives so that we can, um, as a stronger, we can make a whole and we can join forces so we can have more impact. But I do think that women are natural connectors and I think that the only thing is we have to go um, reach out to them and you know, get, get them more involved, but they, they're definitely good connectors. 
So, uh, same, uh, more or less same thing you are, uh, all have referred, they referred that women are actually naturally connected. Yes, it's true that for by nature, they are so connected because of that we are having our families. Yes, well, they have the courage to come forward and they can show their their inner uh, narrative others. So uh, my, my, uh, this, this time my question is not my question, but I want to know that I actually uh, their inner what women should do and what are the, the footsteps they should follow so that they can grow further. Starting with Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Biri. I, I think uh, I just want to illustrate before moving to this specific question, something that Cecilia said. I was participating yesterday in a Stella Nations policy dialogue, and there was a, a lady that was organizing and connecting all the panelists, and she was playing them like a heart, but she wasn't on the screen or anything. She knew all the content, uh, but it was their bosses, their ministers, the, uh, sort of the public faces. So when the Cecilia said women are very connected, so I was like, that's exactly what she was doing. And uh, I think uh, uh, if she was put at the table, it would start making a difference. And, and so there was no reason why she couldn't speak. She actually knew what everybody had to say already. So uh, I, I think that's an example of how women are still sort of not uh, at the, at the uh, main uh, discussion table, but they're supporting and connecting and um, we need to get to, to that point where it's normal for them to actually speak for themselves instead of uh, supporting someone else. Uh, but in that sense, in terms of uh, connected to your question uh, about inner resilience, uh, I cannot uh, stress enough the role of role models and finding other women like you in other roles. Uh, women mentors are necessary in uh, mentorship programs. Um, we also see, we also know from data and research that uh, in, in the venture capital industry, when there's a female uh, VC partner, that a fund is twice as likely to invest in companies with a women on the management team, uh, and three times more likely to invest in companies with a female CEO. So it takes, it takes one to recognize the talent of another one and the benefits of having that diversity in startup teams. So uh, to help women build their inner resilience, we have to start uh, exposing that, uh, the resilience of others, the, uh, the resilience of that uh, one female venture capitalist that is evaluating them. And I think that would have a, a multiplying effect. So with just that example of funding, uh, I think uh, it, it shows that uh, our, our personal resilience is uh, built on other women's resilience and, and uh, in breaking the barriers that got them to where they are. And I think that, that uh, is uh, something that still needs to be done in many industries, not just venture capital. Uh, thank you, Christina. So I would come to now to Cecilia. Already Christina have mentioned about the mentorship program, the training programs that for the women entre entrepreneurs and the leaders. So apart from this one, what are the things you would like to share? So I, I love that Christina brought up some, um, some statistics about how yes. women being involved in networks or being involved in organizations really does amplify the, the strength and, um, and, and there's a proven track record of that. So I think that um, just like with everybody, we need to try things. We need to not be timid and play it safe. Playing it safe never evolves creativity and innovation, but we also have to calculate and build on the small wins. So try a little something. It doesn't have to be big. And we start flexing a muscle. So as we start flexing the muscle, we strengthen it. And then we grow and we evolve and we start innovating and creating. Um, but And building on the small wins, we need to pr also practice grace with ourselves and with each other to say, you know, it's this... This inner resilience only happens because we get better at it and then we get recognized for it. So when you see it in others, point it out. You know, we have to advocate for each other. 
And that's why those networks are, are really important. I think that, that building inner resilience also is a reflection of people around you. So if you surround yourself with people that you want, aspire to be like, then you naturally raise your game I'm, because that rising tide will lift all ships. And, and so if you're surrounding yourself with people that simply make you feel comfortable. That's a nice feeling, but it never builds on anything, right? And so all this all this growth happens outside of your comfort zone. So when I get to be around people like Beauty and Christina at the Global Entrepreneurship Congress, I know that I have to lift my head a little bit higher to see all the things around me and go meet people like Ayumi and and start introducing yourself to a different way of being and and just keep practicing what that's like and surround yourself that way. Yeah, Chris Cecilia, thank you so much for sharing this one. Yes, it was Global Entrepreneurship Congress was as such a platform that actually we got to meet each other and learn each other. That was the connection we built. So this kind of events and programs are actually very helpful. Even this Women Entrepreneurship Congress, uh, we are having so many people together from USA, from France, from any part of the world. So my next question to Aumi, if I ask the same question to you, what is your opinion about this thing? So I would say, Beauty, that um, I think role models that we, you know, we all try and get inspiration from them. I think you have to, um, they have to share also all the failures that they had because, you know, to get somewhere, we just didn't succeed. We're not just perfect and we succeeded. There have been so many failures. I could share lots of mine. But I think if we get used to hearing that even the people that have achieved greatness, that have achieved something, they have done things, you know, entrepreneurs, they have failed at some time, obviously. I think only the only people that have never failed in their lives are those that have never tried anything. So I think that, you know, from when we are little girls, you know, um, we always want our little girls to become perfect and our little boys to be brave. We have to stop saying that. We have to say, okay, you're going to be perfect even if you fail, but you will fail at some point in your life and that's okay. You're going to get over it. You have to get up and get over it and then it's going to be brilliant. But I think we have to reinforce the fact that if you fail, it's, it doesn't mean that you're a failure. You failed once, but you, you know, you have to get up. Um, the fact that you felt once you're not a failure, you can really be a superwoman, you can be, you can do wonderful things and you will get there. And especially so if you surround yourself, like Cecilia said, with people that are going to be motivating, they're going to be supporting, they're going to put you, lift you higher, that is going to be amazing. And I think that's the way. So don't be scared to fail. Share your failures when you are role models, the people that know that you also, you know, you're not that perfect, uh, well, perfectness as we imagine in ourselves that they've never done anything wrong um, and be there to to lift others up when someone is you know, needs a hand go there go help them out because you know thank goodness I've had so many people help me out all along the way otherwise I don't know how I would have done it but I think you know we the power of community the power of sisterhood as I said it's so so important and it can really you know take you to horizons that you have never imagined so and reach out for help as well. Don't be no. Don't be scared of saying, "Gee, you know, I'm having a bad day. I don't know how to do this. Shit happens. Help me." I think if you call out for help and don't be shy or, or you know have, or be ashamed of asking for help, people will help you and will get you, you know help you get out of the path. That's great. Uh, yeah. So you talked about the motivating to the women. Yes, motivation is very important. Uh, but sometimes uh, we face challenges or, or sometimes say, no, 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 we cannot get motivated. Sometimes we get frustrated. So how to hold that motivation? I would like to know a little bit about keeping the motivation, how to keep the motivation from Christian. Yes, uh, just to, to build on what Ayumi said, uh, Sometimes we're trying to find or, or we're looking for perfect role models. I, I, when, when I uh, get asked, you know, what makes a person so outstanding? It wasn't because it was perfect or um, didn't like favor. It's interesting. We have to start looking for interesting role models. Uh, meaning other women that have done things differently, 
and uh, perhaps they have failed, but I think that makes them interesting because they have uh, thought outside the box and challenged themselves and challenged others. And also, I think we can build a lot more motivation if we build inner resilience by, by exposing what the, the resilience that women bring externally. So women are not recognized yet for uh, uh, the effect they have, for example, on a founding team. If there's a woman, usually then they, they have a, a better track record. Diversity within, within teams matter. So I think we have, to, we have yet to expose the resilience, the external resilience that women bring um, to companies, to projects, etc. So I think we can, uh, by, by studying um, more closely the effects that having a woman in, on, a, on a team on, on a decision maker or any other role uh, is just exposing the value that they bring to uh, wherever they're involved. So they bring resilience to something external and I think that can help uh, uh, encourage our inner resilience as well. Thank you. And Christina, now Cecilia, I would like to say uh, about uh, that uh, at our workplace, definitely, we actually need to show our uh, encouragement. Uh, we need to build that connection. So at our workplace, forget about the entrepreneurial activities and so on. So how do we keep our resilience, how to build that connection, or uh, how to show our voice, raise our voice at our workplace? So, um, so I want to uh, kind of add on to what Christina said and then talk about the other ones. You know, you, the, the term, um, the idea about empowerment is um, it's, it's kind of a, a, a hierarchical nature, right? So it's, it's saying like there's a power and then it has to shift from one person to another person. It's like passing a baton. So, so when we share that, when, when Christine was talking about um, diverse workplaces, there's an organization, in um, a multinational organization, that after several years of having employee resource groups where people flocked together and talked about affinity um, in things that they recognize, like women's groups, they realized that the power dynamic still sits in the, a small office with a small amount of people. So that diversity in groups, they never heard heard the conversations. So that diversity actually really matters. The multifaceted aspect of all of our environments definitely do that. And when you were talking about encouraging the voices, um, what Ayumi and Christina both said is together, the alliance. We raise our voices by turning up the volume. We help by amplifying and supporting it with um, by adding our voice. So sometimes we add our voice in unison. Sometimes um, we echo what we've heard. So if I hear something wonderful like I've done in this panel, then I get to share it out with other people. So that also amplifies the voice. And then affirming those voices in the circles that we're in. So when you're in a room and somebody says something powerful, important, you know, something that, that perks your, your interest or gets you stimulated, then then echo that voice and, and affirm it. You know what? That's a really great idea. Thank you so much, Ayumi, for sharing that. Or and recognize people. When Christine Christine has a wealth of information around data and if you say, well, so Christina that I know shared this, it, it also elevates her and it encourages her to raise her voice and other people to share out. And all of these are better when we're done in community. No single person gets there on their own. And we stand on the shoulders of each other and we strengthen the foundation of those who will follow us after we're gone or not doing this work anymore. Oh, okay, thank you, Cecilia. Now my question to Aumi is that through your community, how you are encouraging the women to raise their voices? Um, I think we putting them. We are. We have to go. We reach out to them and we asking them their opinion. So we putting them up. Um, you no, know, showcasing them in different events. I think women, if they're not seen, they cannot be heard, right? So one of the main things, well, what we are also doing here today, right, is that we are showcasing women, they have things to say, and I think we all have different things to say. But the point is we have to give them a chance 
to express our ideas and our opinions in places where people are there to be heard. So I think it's important for us to be here um, in these panels that are obviously for women entrepreneurship, but also in all kinds of panels. I can't see, I can't stand anymore to go to, to, to um, summits or to conferences where we still see um, you know, a panel full of, full of men when they're talking about health or talking about their governmental or about specific ideas. If you don't bring in um, diversity on those main panels, um, you know, we, 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 we can't be heard. So I think women in tech, one of the things we are is we're trying to showcase that all women have a, a something to say, that we're all experts in different areas, um, and they have to be, find a, a place where they feel comfortable, in security, a safe place to be able to share the voices. No one's going to be mocking and saying, oh, look what she says. You know, I think we have to feel place and um, safe and, um, yeah, and empowered by, by the community. I think this is, this is very important. Yes, community is very important. Uh, now, uh, Christian, I have one question to you. As you have worked with these policies and data, already you have uh, lots of database around the world, and you have worked with the policy makers. So my last question to you is that any kind of recommendation, suggestion, or policies you would like to put forward so that the government or the private sectors can take this suggestion and then help it or implement this in their organization? Yes, uh, definitely there's, a, like I mentioned, there are a lot of blind spots in policy making where they don't see how a program uh, will benefit entrepreneurs, but not women entrepreneurship specifically. Uh, so I think this is uh, can be solved by uh, building a, a data infrastructure that always uh, keeps track of how your policy instrument or your program is affecting women. Um, if you look, for example, uh, in trade department data, even in, in many advanced countries with a lot of budget, like uh, the UK, the Department of International Trade, does not yet have statistics on the gender breakdown of the SME exporters. Um, so that prevents uh, uh, um, prevents us from doing uh, a lot more uh, targeted and better uh, fine-tuned uh, approaches to help those women exporters, or, or maybe there are many and we don't even know because we're not recognizing them. They're just within the larger group. So I think data matters, metrics matter, and finally also uh, stakeholder consultation. Uh, I think a lot of uh, uh, policies for entrepreneurs in general are uh, not designed with consultation with the actual beneficiaries, the entrepreneur, and, and with women's entrepreneurship programs that happen sometimes it's men deciding what they think uh, should, should help or what they heard has worked. I think it's very important to have those stakeholder consultations. Stakeholder conversa conversation. Yes, uh, that's, a, that's a good idea there, that uh, people would learn to know more about these things. So if I ask the same question to Cecilia, do you have any suggestions on this issue? Um, suggestions on building for competency and connections and courage. Um, I, because, I think it's sure. it's all of these things that, um, that we've been discussing on the call. Um, as I mentioned, we work together um, and when we work together we achieve more so we need to stop competing against each other and you um, you should surround yourself with people who challenge you to be a better version of yourself so I'm honored to have a circle of women who are my peers they're my colleagues they're co-collaborators and they're friends and they hold me accountable they cheer me on they listen to me when they have my they listen to my concerns and disappointments they help me rise up in the face of the the next thing and you know this event is relatively new today is women's entrepreneurship day and the first one was commemorated in 2014 that's just a few years ago women have been entrepreneurs for far longer than that and we're entrepreneurs and ecosystem builders 364 other days of the year this is hard work and no matter how how much you work at it um, 
you know, it's important and it matters. So we need to celebrate, celebrating ourselves and celebrating each other. So advocating for each other is paramount. When you hear something and, and share something, we need to also model what's needed to create what's possible. And there's a term that, um, that my friend Kristen at the Startup Champions Network had shared, um, and Seema, who had put a question into the chat, you know, we talk about how you're keeping quiet and afraid to, to share what goes on. So Kristen shared a term with me, it's vulnerageous. It's a little bit of uh, vulnerability and a lot of being courageous. And a friend of mine said maybe we add a little outrageous to it. So be bold and courageous, but don't live in that fear. And there's one important lesson that I learned from my son, and I shared it a number of years ago in Istanbul at GEC. So I want to share that. And I shared it with a room full of women entrepreneurs and ecosystem builders. So several years ago, I was having a conversation with my son and his friend, and they stopped me in my tracks because I used a term that I just, as a feminist and, and a woman supporter, use just in conversation. And it was the term mansplaining. And mansplaining, for those of you who don't know, is a term um, that describes the explanation of something typically by a man um, to a woman in a manner that's condescending and patronizing. And, and these young men said, can you please not vilify our entire gender by the actions of a bunch of people who are acting badly? It's not my fault that they say things in this way. And if I want to raise a young man who supports and respects women, I have to also support and respect them. So call people out when they're saying things badly. Absolutely. Don't stand for that. But at the same time, if you push back against people because they, they're not like you for saying things and and using a term like mansplaining, it really doesn't help in building up everybody else. So being respectful of other people and inviting them into conversations is how we behave. We as women don't want to be judged by the actions of a single person, right? Good, bad, or indifferent. So that's how we support each other. Thank you so much, Cecilia. Any final remarks from Aumi? Um, yes, Beauty. Um, just going back when you were saying, you know, how to motivate people um, every day. And I think it, we have to say that we have good days and we have bad days, you know. Um, we can't be motivated every time at the top, you know. They're just not human <laughs> also, you know. Some days, you know, we just want to go reach out to the stars. The other day, we just don't want to even get out of bed because, you know, it just happens. That's how it is. But I think what does help me is to think, okay, what's my why? What's my purpose? Why am I doing this? And when you focus on that and you think, okay, am I doing this good, bad, especially the bad times, because I want to reach this, because my dream is to, because this is important to me. And when you focus on your why, when you understand it, when you know it's your true, um, that something's really meaningful to you, something you would do even if no one paid you to do it, then you get the motivation. And also be kind to yourself. You know, the days that you don't feel like getting up and doing it, just say, okay, well, it will become better tomorrow. <laughs> so be kind to yourself. Offer yourself some time to rest as well, to get the energy up, you know, um, just go and enjoy, uh, get some energy back, you know, either with the family or with the loved ones or with nature, with anything that makes you um, come back into the momentum. But just focus on, on your why, on the purpose, and I think motivation comes back. <laughs> Thank you so much, Aumi. Uh, we are very end of our session. So thank you, Christina, thank you, Cecilia, and thank you, Aumi, for joining us and helping us to know about how to encourage women and building that connection. You have talked about a lot more data. You have talked about the practical experiences with us. So hopefully our audience got to know about the practical knowledge. So thank you for being with us. The key takeaway for our session is that you have to be educated and you have to take the mentorship and education from the surroundings if you have that surroundings if you have motivation from inside yourself you will be able to succeed in every aspects of life so 
I would like to extend my thank. I would like to extend my thank to our panelists as well as my audience, those who are watching us. Thank you guys for being with us. Hope to see you in our next session.